Hello and welcome to another episode of Metal Effort. My name's Nehemiah, and today we're going to be looking at this piece of metal, the Civivi Backlash. And Backlash is misspelled B-A-K-L-A-S-H. So, this has been a really interesting knife to review. And let's get into some size comparisons so you know what we're working with. We've got the PM2, we've got the Para 3, and it's pretty much blade lengthwise from the actual shoulder is basically the exact same as a PM2. So cutting edge is a lot shorter. Cutting edge is about 3.125, uh, which is actually about the same cutting edge as the Para 3. So it's uh, not a small knife, it's a medium knife I would say. The Savivi company, which is uh, part of the We Knives company, just kind of their budget option. A lot of their other knives are a lot larger than this, actually. So this is kind of one of their smaller knives in this new brand that they're making, which is cool. This particular one, just so you know, right off the, the bat, there's black, there's a tan, and there's a green, all of which have these kind of blue liners. These are steel liners, G10 body. The steel on these is 9CR18MOV. And then weight-wise, let's get a, a weigh-in here. And we are looking at just under 4 ounces, 3.95, which is over an ounce an inch, but it's not atrocious. I, I don't know. I have mixed feelings about it. I think overall it's a, a small blemish on what this knife is. Is offering so let's jump into our dent of the metal the decent the excellent the nitpicks and the terrible first off in the dent I love this blade shape so just kind of a simple drop point with a swedge have some jimping on the top a lot of flat there's no like weird recurve it's just excellent for flats belly tip finger choil I, I am really, really high on this blade shape. I think this blade shape is fantastic. They did a really good finish on this, actually, too. It's um, pretty clean lines, very symmetrical. The edge, I don't know how much of this I'm going to be able to show, but they did a really excellent job on the edge. Came razor sharp out of the box, and the grinds on this are excellent. This is a hollow grind. It's extremely thin behind the edge. It's hard to even show it. Really, Ugh. There we go. We're starting with already very thin blade stock here, which is like 0.12 inches, which is very, very thin. Uh, and then a hollow grind on top of that. So this is an extremely slicey blade, which depending on what you're looking for, is either really really awesome or kind of fragile depending on what you're gonna do with your blade for me and the stuff that I'm doing this is excellent I really 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 like the blade shape the grind and the the finishing job on the blade the jimping I mentioned just briefly is pretty good jimping it's a lot of jimping not as much as our honey badger was but still it's great you can uh, you can choke up in either grip and that jimping is helpful um, next thing is the ergo so you know that again this is the subjective part like everybody's crying about my review on the old Elijah Isham mini Ethereum and if you have baby hands I'm sure it's comfortable and I have medium hands I do not have large hands and that was not it so keeping that in mind I have medium hands for a person a man and this is excellent. This is very, very good. It fits. There's room. Your pinky's not falling off. And this, the handle still is shorter than the PM2, but still plenty of space for, I think, most hand shapes. And it's comfortable in either grip, choking up or doing like the saber grip. I, there's no hot spots on this thing. The clip is done in such a way that there's no hot spot there. And I, I just, man, it's, it fits, it locks in, 
it's comfortable. You could do some detailed work. You can, you know, get in there and do it however you want. Reverse grip people. Up. Wow, yeah, that's even kind of gives you a little thumb thing there. I never use that grip, but it's awesome. I like a nine point five out of out of ten. I think maybe only a Bark River would have a better, more comfortable handle than this. They really did their their work on making sure this was comfortable. The flipper tab. Flipper tab is really good. The flipper tab is not too protruding. I mean, it's definitely seen more subtle flipper tabs than this, but let's see if I can pull this off here. Very well chamfered on all sides, not sharp in the slightest, perfect angle for your finger, and bam, it, it's great. You can do push button, barely works, but works pretty reliably. Light switch is really where that, that flipper tab wants to be. But excellent. I it's as far as like pocket pecking, the clip goes at a decent angle. It's not really all that pointy. It's kind of got that knob at the end. I didn't find it too much of a problem at all. I, I carry this knife quite a lot. It's not. It's definitely not a small knife. It's not a thin knife in the handle. It's a thin knife in the blade for sure. But um, didn't bother me. Didn't bother me at all that clip. And just considering how well it works here, I am quite pleased with it. So next on the decent list is the clip. So the clip is definitely deep carry, which I love. I love deep carries, you know, I like that. It's not as good as like our honey badger knife was where the screws were actually recessed in addition to being a deep carry clip, but there's still enough of a gap in between that shouldn't be a problem to get your pants in between the screws and the clip. So I'm not going to ding it too much because it's a good shape, it's subtle, looks like a pen in your pocket, which is nice, plenty, plenty of spring, it's not an issue at all, unlike some other knives, and no hot spots. So I really like the clip. I think the Honey Badger clip beats it by a hair because of those recessed screws, but I mean the Honey Badger has like the best clip of any knife I've ever had, so... All right, moving on. We got the fit and finish. The fit and finish is excellent, even though it's in the decent. The centering is almost perfect. It's maybe favoring presentation side, maybe? I don't know. Might just be perfect, it's hard to tell. But needless to say, chamfering on everything that needs to be chamfered Comfortable in the hands, no glaring issues on the fit and finish whatsoever. Lock up is right where it should be. There's no blade play. The Even the lanyard hole, let's see if I can show this off. There's like perfectly lined up. If there's any like mistakes, you can usually point it out with the lanyard hole, but this is really, really good. A little bit of lint in there, but... Uh, Top notch fit and finish, guys. I mean, this is a this is a showpiece in that regard, which is crazy. And then, last thing in the decent section is the steel type. So, it it's not going to be as good as like S thirty V or anything like that. But this isn't the same as all the other M O V types, the really budgety ones. This is the high end of the low end, you might say. So this is like a poor man's S thirty V, I would say. I want to do more testing with it. I definitely cut with the knife, but I didn't. I didn't want to sharpen it, um, and I didn't want to push it too far. But I'll. I might test the steel more and give like a, a follow up review on the steel more than the knife. But I haven't had an issue with it so far. On Blade HQ's website, they're saying the hardness is anywhere between fifty eight and sixty. If it's sixty, I'm quite pleased. If it's fifty eight, I'm probably not. Um, so. I don't know if that's going to vary between knife to knife, probably will, and I wouldn't pay to get the hardness tested on a $42 knife, but there you go. I, I think the, the steel is definitely really, really good for the price. Uh, you, you know I'm a knife steel nerd, but, you know, factoring price and purpose and all that stuff, I'm perfectly happy with this steel. It, it hasn't given me any issues so far, but I might do a long-term update. 
Now, let's get into the ex excellent. I've got two things to talk about. First off is the action. The action on this knife is absurd. It's acoustic. That sound is just, oh, it's great. I love that sound of just thwack out. And just so you know, I did not take this knife apart. It doesn't have the Nehemiah tuning. It doesn't have the nano oil that I would normally put in there. It'll probably get even better than this. I just wanted to give you an idea of how good it is out of the box. I didn't sharpen it. I didn't, I didn't take it apart. This is how it is out of the box if you get this knife. And it's just... It's a showpiece for action at this price point is absurd. It drops shut pretty well for a knife like this. Uh, obviously, it's on ball bearings. Uh, it's not. I don't think there's ceramic or anything special like that. But man, the action is just really good. So I was I was taking the knife and I was showing it to people at work discreetly and. Uh, you know, I'll show them knives. I'll, I'll hand them this knife. And I'm like, how much is this knife? Do you think and they're like $400? Oh, it's $1,200. Hand them this knife. And usually they guess the price, right? It's about $200. But I hand this knife to several of them. And they're not knife people, obviously, but just people that are mildly interested in knives or can appreciate a nice knife. Ask them how much they think this is worth. They kept guessing at no less $300 or up. Somewhere between four fifteen and three hundred dollars. That that's the fit and finish, the look of it, and just the feel of it. They they open it once and it's like wow. So to a non knife person, this seems like a high end knife, which is saying something. E even though I really liked the Honey Badger and it definitely is a gem, you hand that knife to somebody, they're gonna guess it's you know fifty dollars or less because of what it looks like, what it feels like. It's just. This is in a different like echelon of like fit and finish and just aesthetics and action that really can fool somebody into thinking this is a much more expensive knife than it is, which is awesome. So that is definitely one of the two excellent things. Next one is just the price. The price is phenomenal. It's going to be $42.50 on mo most places that you're going to buy it from. And for $42.50... I cannot think of a better knife to recommend. There are asterisks, which we'll talk about, but for pretty much anyone, like even, even if you were going to be kind of tough on the knife, you know, it's not a washer-based system, so there are going to be some, you know, gunk could get in there. You might need to clean it out from time to time. But worst case scenario, like your knife gets destroyed, you buy another one for $42. I, it's hard to argue not to get this knife so the price and what you're getting is phenomenal it, it really is phenomenal if you put m390 on here and you ask you know 70 dollars for this i would buy it in a heartbeat obviously and at 42 dollars with the steel it has i'm still happy to buy it that that's how good it is so yes let's talk about nitpicks i only have two nitpicks here first one is just the the weight it feels a little heavy in the pocket. Now, let's see if I can show this off, but there are, yeah, there you go. There's some hollowing out of the steel liners. So it definitely could have been a lot worse. Could have been a lot worse. But these are steel liners and they're pretty thick. And so the knife is kind of heavy. It felt like, you know, it fit in my pocket fine, but it just, it was tugging on my pants a little bit more than I would have liked. Considering the size of it, I this isn't a huge thing. This is why it's in my nitpick, but you know I wanted to find something. There, there's not much here, so that's one. Second one, and this is only one that you would figure out if you actually are using the knife. But there's the chamfer here in between the liner and the scale, and you can see here. I try to clean it out before I did the thing, but gunk and little bits of lint or whatever get stuck in between that groove. It's not flush like it is on the backspacer between the liners. And so it's just gonna look a little bit grimy, I think, over time. And it's hard to like get in there and like clean it out. It's not a big deal, but it's there. It's a nitpick. And that's it. I don't have anything terrible to say. It, it's, a, it's a $42 knife 
that is cosplaying as a hundred dollar knife or more and in some regards i mean this beats actions on knives i mean this is a two hundred dollar knife and the action is like barely adequate i mean it it barely gets there i if i'm not allowed to sell or trade the knife and i had to choose between these two knives i would pick the backlash in a heartbeat that's how good the action and just how everything fits the ergos the clip the blade shape everything is just incredibly practical and very well done so what's my final conclusion my final conclusion is simply in regard to hard use between the steel kind the thin spine and the hollow grind you might want to find a different knife that you won't mind for everyone else this knife is fine have a good one, everybody. See you in my next video.